Well, made it finally. Another new over explaining thing. This time by popular demand, African Violet. Um, I wanted to show you my great view in my new space, but um, unfortunately, the lighting is just not having it with this phone camera. I actually have a supplementary light here that is one of our uh, production lights, just so you can see me. And uh, so, without further ado, I'm going to show you about um, how to repot something that probably has root rot, that I'm thinking has root rot. I'm going to check it out. Um, this guy is overgrown his pot, so I'm going to put him in a new one. And um, just various stuff about African violets. So, here we go. First up, we've got, uh, this is Optimara Hiroshige, and uh, it's a standard size. So I want to show you the size difference. This is a standard. It's doing really well. It's got uh, some really pretty flowers with uh, interesting shape and a little bit of a purple blush to it. So that's a standard. This is a semi-miniature. So you can see, comparatively, this is Cup of Kindness. And um, I recently trimmed off some of the older leaves, but you can see the size difference here between these two. And here is a true miniature. This one is uh, Max Momentary Meltdown, and you can see how much smaller it is than these guys. This has got some older blooms that need to be trimmed off. In fact, I'll just go ahead and do that now. You just reach way down in the middle and just kind of pinch with your fingertips, and the old flowers just come right away. And then here's another mini that is in a soaker pot. So it's a two-piece pot. You've got a bottom with water. And this is unglazed ceramic in the bottom part here. And it just sits in the water and soaks up the uh, water in little bits. So it keeps it evenly moist. This one is Max Pure Poetry. I really like the Max. They're, uh, they're a good line, honestly. Um, this one... I wanted to show you. It's in mini, but it's interesting because it's what's called a bustle. Yeah, here's one. See, it's got kind of this double leaf, which is unusual. Um, and the flowers are called wasp flowers, just from the shape of them. They're kind of reminiscent of a wasp insect. But this, bu this is the bustle leaf, which is uh, different. This is the only one I have that has that, uh, that configuration. And it's variegated. And it's like a three-color variegated because it's got um, pink in the middle too, but it's also a dropper, which means that if you handle the flowers too much, they just fall right off the stem. Um, that is not true of most African violets. Some of them are known as droppers because of that feature. Also present are a whole lot of baby plants. Um, I lost a lot of my plants last year in a freeze, and some kind souls sent me leaves. And here you can see, here's the mother leaf in here. So this is about a year old. I really should have repotted these some time ago. Life happens. So there's the mother leaf. And then I've actually got two babies coming off of that. This is Wesley's Samwise Salutations. <laughs> yes, my nails are a mess. I'm sorry. I'll get on that. Um, you had to ignore my hands for now. Um, here's another one that's started from a leaf. Um, you can see that I've got it cut back. I started with the leaf hole. And then when the leaf starts showing little babies, then um, I cut a piece off the leaf when the babies get bigger it gives it more energy to keep cutting pieces off the mother leaf as long as the mother's fine sometimes you'll get a funky wilted leaf eh, it's not a big deal you can either just kind of pull gently or you can get your pinky in there push down on the stem and it'll just kind of snap right off and uh, that helps trim off that stuff so uh real quick this is Falling Raindrops. This is the only one that I have at the trailer, uh, which means that it's supposed to grow a tall stem like that. And it will eventually kind of trail over the edge of the pot, which is a nice effect. Actually, it's funny because I have this one that is um, Cupid doll that is behaving like a trailer. It's not actually supposed to do that. But the trailer, the Cupid doll is more of a trailer than a trailer. But uh, anyway, so I thought I'd show you the growth habit that a trailer should have when it's that type of an African violet. And they often have multiple crowns. Um, usually you don't want a multiple crown in an African violet. Um, let's see, you want a nice, let me just grab one around here. What is this guy? This is Optimara Moonstone. Um, and you can see it's pretty even. It's um, a rosette shape. You know, you want a nice even rosette shape. You can see the baby leaves down here. 
These can just be trimmed off, as I said, without just stick your pinky. Get right in near that main stem, push down, and it'll just snap that leaf right off. And you can trim off the baby ones um, as they, as the plant obviously matures out of these tiny baby leaves. Um, you get these little leaves underneath here that they, it just saps energy from the growth of the plant. So really what I should have done with this six months ago is done this and then, uh, you know, trimmed it and repotted it. Um, this one here is frosty cherry. This is going to get quite large. And the rule with potting violets is that the pot should be one third the spread or wingspan of the leaves. As you can see, this leaf is far more than than that little pot. It's, you know, it's it's reaching. It's like, okay, this is this is too small. So I need a bigger pot. So this is an example of one that really does need to be repotted into something larger. And uh, also, I, and I know I'm all over the place. As an aside, I like to use um, this kind of a label. It's the, the P-Touch um, machine. You know, it makes a nice clean label. You can actually mostly peel these off the pots and reuse them if you want to. Um, not always, but I mean, it's, it's a good way to just take that off. When you repot it, move it to the bigger pot and then you'll have the name because you don't want to lose the name. If you lose a name, it becomes annoyed or a noid or N-O-I-D meaning no ID. So if it has no ID, it's a noid. <laughs> and that makes me annoyed. Ha, ah, poor. Now this one I think has a problem going on and I'll show you why. Um, this is actually painted silk, which I've shown in some of my pictures um, on Facebook. But the outer leaves are getting really droopy, no matter how much I water it. And that's a very common way to kill an African violet is to overwater it. And because they're very sensitive to root rot, that's one of the main problems that these have. So as soon as you notice the outer leaves getting floppy like this, even though the soil, you can stick your pinky in there, it's like it's it's moist, it's nice, it shouldn't be doing that. That tells me there's probably root rot in here. So I'm going to repot this guy. Um, and... Yeah, once we get it out of the, the soil, let's see what we've got. Okay, so some tools I have. I have uh, an exacto knife. Um, I've got other pots down under the table here. Um, so let's just give this a tug and see what's going on with these roots. Um, you can kind of tease away the soil. You can see the size of the root ball is really undersized for the size of the plant. And it's, uh, hmm, yeah, not real happy. Something's going on in here, and I'm suspecting rot. Um, it's not taking up moisture as it should be. The soil is relatively moist. It's a little on the dry side, but not so much that it would be causing this. So let's investigate a little deeper. Dig down in here. Okay, the stem actually doesn't look bad. There's no obvious rot. Um... It could just be part of the mat watering system that I've been using. So I'm going to use my thumb to scrape away some of the outer stem, which if it had rot, um, in fact, you know what? I'm going to just pretend this has rot. Okay. If I lose painted silk, I lose painted silk. And I'm just going to cut the roots off of this, which seems really severe, but this is, this is how you refresh these. Um, if it gets a long neck, um, do I have anything here with a long neck? Uh, oh, these guys, yeah. These guys have got kind of a ridiculously long neck. Um, that shouldn't be like that. That's a common thing you get is it just keeps stretching as it grows upwards. The bottom leaves die off and it, it gets what's called a long neck. Um, and uh, so really to renew your African violet, you want to cut that off. So I'm going to pretend this does have root rot. It may down in, in the middle here someplace. It's a little bit squishy. It's just generally not real happy. So I'm going to use my X-Acto, cut off the root ball, behead it. Seems scary. Bear with me. <laughs> um, so then I'm going to just pick off, um, I don't know, the, the outer two or three rows of leaves um, to where it's a good solid plant. Oh, there's a little sucker in there. I don't know if you can see that, but there's a little sucker plant in there. We're going to ignore that for now. Um, just kind of pull off some leaves. Eh, I got a middle one. Oh, well, it's too bad. Um, 
And then again, using your thumbnail, or if it's a bigger, harder plant with a thicker stem, you may need to use like a, a butter knife or something like that. Just scrape off the outer coating of the stem until you get down to the, the kind of juicy stuff. And then there's your, your base to, uh, to start your new plant from. So then you're just going to take some, uh, discard all that, take some moist soil. I like to mix extra perlite, that's the white stuff, into, um, I like, oh, where is it, uh, SunGrow Black Gold. Other people like other kinds. I think this is a nice light potting mix, um, but then I also add more perlite to it to make it even lighter so that you don't get any root rot problems or less. And, uh, and just, you know, pop it in there. And you're just going to take a sandwich bag and dome this for about uh, three weeks or so, two, three weeks. And it should be starting to grow roots by that point. So I didn't bring a sandwich bag with me. I didn't think of it, but, uh, you know, I'll do that when we're done here and just kind of keep an eye on it. Keep the soil a little bit extra moist and it should reroot just fine. And it should be painted silk again in a few months, hopefully. Hopefully I haven't just killed it. <laughs> that sometimes will happen. You just got to take your chances a little bit with these guys. Got to be brave. Got to be brave and do it. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let me repot something that needs a bigger pot. Let's do frosty cherry. When potting up to a larger size, you don't want to pot uh, into something really giant. You only want a small increment. So that's about right um, for the size of the plant and for to move it up to where you're not suddenly plunging it into this giant pot. African violets like to be a little bit crowded to do their best um, and to, um, to bloom for you. So you can see all the perlite I have in the starter soil here. This one is a a baby that I got from uh, another mother plant. Um, I can't remember if I started a leaf or if it was a sucker. I cut off the side of something. I don't remember actually, but let me get some of those big chunks of stuff out. And this is a soaker pot. So I'm going to move this guy up into a soaker pot. It has graduated. Yay! Get some more soil. And just kind of, uh, you know, line up the, 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 um, uh, bottom of where the leaves are with the soil level. I mean, don't put it too deep and don't have it sticking up. You just kind of fill in around the sides. Kind of not, don't pack it in super hard. Oh, right, and you can take off these baby leaves at this point, and it'll help the mother plant uh, grow a little better, have more energy if it's not putting energy into those little old funky leaves, the old baby leaves. And again, those are from the bottom. So those are the ones that are older and not really needed as much by the plant. So let's pull some of those off. A more soil in there so it's not flopping around in its new pot. I got this one uh, from my sister. Her uh, mother-in-law makes these. And uh, so there's Frosty Cherry in its new home. Oops, got a leaf in there. And I'll sit, when I'm done here, I'll put some water in the bottom. And there we go. So then, now that's the right size pot for that size of plant. And frosty cherry is going to get quite large. So I look forward to uh, repotting that even bigger in the future. Okay, dividing. Um, this one was one leaf. Optimara main two is the name of this one. Um, and as you can see, there's multiple plants in here. Um, I planted one leaf and often you get lots of babies from one leaf, but they can't, you know, live like this forever. So I'm going to pull this out, see if I can separate these. And I'm not sure what I'm going to end up with because I, I don't know if you can tell, but this one here has kind of reddish stems, this guy here, and the ones next to it do not. So I wonder if I'm getting some kind of a variation because sometimes that'll happen. And actually, while I'm thinking of it, let me show you something real quick. Um, this is a cup of kindness. You see the super dark purple flower has. This is also a cup of kindness. And this is a much paler one with fantasy spots. It should have fantasy spots all over the flowers. Yeah, there's some tired flowers in here I need to pick, but um, you see the difference in the flower. This one I would say it reverted back genetically. Um, it is the same variety, 
but it's not blooming true and what you want. This is the true flower with the fantasy spots. This is not blooming true, but it's the same variety. So that's something to look for. You, you get a lot of uh, genetic variation with these guys. And um, often they're called sports. You'll get a sport of a known variety. Sometimes that's good. Sometimes that's not good. My sister actually got a sport. And I'm just going to kind of pull these apart as I'm talking. Of um, a really common one called uh, Rebel's Spatter Cake. And it looks like it, she's got a really interesting sport called a chimera, which can only be bred. Oh, good. This is pulling apart really easily. It can only be bred by, like, stem cuttings or something. It's really difficult to propagate those. I don't have any of those. Um, okay, so then there's two more. Sometimes you have to get in here with an exacto and cut the root ball apart. I'm hoping to not have to do that with these. But these are going to get individual up. See, these... These are so succulent that you'll often just snap leaves off as you're going because this is so rigid and brittle and fragile, but you just kind of carefully take your time. Okay, these leaves are entwined, so i got to kind of tease these apart so I don't lose them. Oh, no, I lost it. Yeah, because they're just, they're, sometimes people will let them go a little dry so they're not so turgid and, uh, then you don't lose so many leaves, but oh, I'm good. This is separating easily, so I don't have to cut this apart. Um, sometimes when you get those suckers, like I showed you earlier, those little side plants, um, and now we have three from one. Yay! So I've got three of Optimara Maine, and I have no idea what's going to happen with this red one, but hey, let's grow it up and let it bloom and see what happens. And these are all babies from leaves. Um, some of these are off of my leaves. Some of these are off of uh, leaves friends have sent. Um, oh, and then here's another one that you can see the size of this leaf. It, it's absolutely huge. And this is a uh, bubblegum charm. It's going to be pink. Um, but you can see here's got the, the colored reverse. It's going to be huge. It's going to be a huge, huge plant. One real quick note about uh, different types of leaves. Uh, let's see. These are uh, this and this. And this are all girl foliage, which generally has a, a paler center of the leaf. Uh, and then it has kind of a, of a wavier edge, like this is a, a really good example of girl foliage. My, my sad, wilty, painted silk that hopefully won't be wilty for very, very long. Um, so that is girl foliage. But uh, you've got, um, again, the red reverse. Here's another one. It's got, uh, so we have uh, Bubblegum Charm again. It's got this color under here. Uh, this one too. What is this? This is Optimara Ferra. And it's got kind of a reddish tinge under there. Um, even Cupidol has a little bit of that reddish underneath. And then uh, a lot of them don't have any color underneath. Um, like, you know, that's just, it's just green. And then you've got uh, Variegated Foliage. Let's see, what is this one? This is... Ah, Max Rouge Rogue has uh, that kind of variegation to it. Sometimes you'll get center variegation. Oh, yeah, and then uh, here's uh, Zar Gora has also got some variegation of similar type to this. Okay, so here is uh, Combustible Pigeon. <laughs> and um, it's not as, as colorful as it could be, but you can kind of see some of the crown variegation on this. Um, it's paler in the middle and, and then darker on the outside. And it should be. It should look like that. So that's a different type of variegation. And while I was in the other room, I grabbed another example of um, something not blooming true. And this is uh, Max Ring Around the Rosie. And you can see it's pink, kind of a raspberry with uh, raspberry edges. And then here is... Whatever this now is, it's annoyed because it is not blooming true. It's also supposed to be Max Ring Around the Rosy. Um, it's got, you know, the same kind of leaf shape um, that's got the, you know, serrations on the edges. But definitely, it's just very obvious that this is not blooming the same at all. Oh, yeah, one other quick thing about leaf shape. Um, it can help you identify some of these varieties. Like if you're looking through your tray of stuff and you're like, oh, this has got, you know, an obvious what they call a spoon-shaped leaf versus, uh, let's see, what's a rounder-shaped one? Like this one here. 
you know, you can see that the leaf shapes are very different. Um, this one is more flat, uh, it's a little shinier. This one's more, like I said, kind of a, a spoon shaped. Uh, and then you've got, you know, the highly ruffled, you know, the girl foliage. So this, you start getting an eye for this and you start recognizing them so that when you have this big tray of plants, you can look in this and go, oh, you know what? I bet that one is um, spoon shaped foliage. Sure enough, it's Cup of Kindness. And I've got like a billion of these things. Cup of Kindness is a very vigorous grower. It's very easy to propagate. Ah, and propagation, real quick. Um, the leaves, people have asked me, what leaves do you take or how do you propagate these? You want to take a, a middle leaf off an adult plant. Like, let's just use this as an example. I'm not going to pull a leaf off this. But you don't want the teeny, teeny ones in the middle. And you don't want the older, big ones outside because these are just going to rot. They're not going to grow roots. The little ones... They might grow roots, but they're still kind of growing themselves. So, you know, it's best to take a, a middle ring type leaf. Let's just grab one out of the, the waste pile here. Um, I would cut it at an upward angle, like so, so that um, you get as much surface as possible for uh, baby plants to grow. Uh, don't cut it off straight. I mean, you can you cut off straight. But if you cut it at a 45 degree angle upwards, then these little babies can grow. And to start one, literally all you do is just you know, grab a pot of soil and just put it, you know, partway into the soil, in a moist soil, um, and cover it with a baggie. Or put it in a closed container. I use, um, this was a thing that giant salad came in. <laughs> and it has a lid, or you can just put a lid over it. Um, this one was... Um, I think like a box of cookies or something from the deli and you just, uh, you know, put a covering over it, leave it until it starts producing um, little baby leaves at the soil level. And then, you know, it's rooted, it's growing, it's not going to rot. It's all happy and safe. Okay, I hope you enjoyed me over explaining my African violet collection and the types of plants, the types of leaves, how to propagate them, what to do if they have root rot, how to recognize root rot. It is over explaining this is what you people want so here I am so um, if you'd like me to over continue over explaining things, <laughs> then uh, you know subscribe and all that stuff that the YouTube kids do and all that.